Hey everyone, we're back. This is our season six, episode two, home review. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, what was that? I don't know. Okay. Go ahead. Keep going. Um, the funny thing was on Sky TV. Here we get the show on Sky Atlantic, um, and the description and the title of the TV show comes up probably a couple of days before each week so after each episode airs you get a new description a couple of days later and they described that the title was homeward bound rather than home is that what it said yeah. homeward bound homeward bound it was definitely it definitely wasn't home but well yeah it well i suppose the same thing it wasn't just home bound no maybe. homeward bound wow that's weird yeah homeward that is bound. weird yeah so that was yeah. the uk title which is strange um, but in terms of the title, just very quickly, it references a few characters. It's quite obvious, really, you know, Bran's going to winter back home to Winterfell in his visions. Mm -hmm. You've got um, Theon going home, and I know Nico's going to go into that at the, in the small council. Mm -hmm. um, you've got Arya going home to the House of Black and White, and the relief that sh you can see when... Jack and oh, takes her back okay, to good, the House of Black and White. Yeah, 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 and like also, um, a new character appears who's returned home, and that's Euron. Very good. So I just thought... I I'd... forgot to think about anything to do with the title <laughs> whatsoever. And before we get into it, what about the links? <clears throat> uh, I, I know when we, we watched it, I said uh, 10. <laughs> or right. did I say five? I think I said ten. Well, remember, it's out. I think it's out of five, it's isn't it? Out of five. It? Yeah, you yeah, Forget yeah. this rating but system every time. <laughs> I definitely gave it a ten. Uh, I'll revise it to a nine. But I fucking love this episode. Right. There was a lot in there, and I hope I get to uh, get it all out because I saw a fucking shitload, and I enjoyed. Yeah. So compared to last it. week. And but even that, just just watching it, I was fucking entertained pretty much all the way through. Yeah. Um, well, I think I said to you when we after the last. I mean, that was really so like wow, the last of the very last frame, and I was kind of on the edge of my seat, mm. not knowing whether it was is it going to work, isn't it going to work, is it gonna, what's going to happen. So I, I did like the way they did that. I thought they did a pretty good job with yeah. it because they drug it out just enough. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, like, yeah. When I was going, I was like, come on, don't be cliche. Don't, <laughs> don't be cliche. Don't be cliche. And then and you were like, saying, be cliche. <laughs> by the end of it, I was like, okay, come on, be cliche, be cliche. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it was good. Um, uh, I remember good. after the, after we'd kind of like, after that last final frame, I think I turned to you and said, I'd, well, I definitely liked it better than last week. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the Sand Snakes weren't in it. Dawn wasn't in it. So that's always got to be a, a, a bonus. I, I, um, I don't mind Dawn, really. Yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah. I, so you'd say, well, what, four I enjoyed Dawn links? last season, uh, this season. Yeah, but I understand why people hate mm. Dorne, and I, I hate Dorne for those reasons as well, but I also get a kick out of some of the shit that happens in Dorne. Four out of five, then? For you, or for me. What, what are you... Four out of five, yeah. Okay. Or 4.5 if I could, but I can't. Oh, no half links, how many times? So it's a four. Um, I would say, well, I said three last week, so I've got to say four this week, because I, my in instinctive reaction at the end of the episode was I liked better. it better than last week. I yeah. would, I would... Damn well put it close to a 10, but then I'm, I'm assuming that something will beat this episode in terms of enjoyment at some point throughout mm. the rest of the series. So, I mean, yeah. but this was pretty damn good. Um, let's get into it then. Um, so the first, the opening scene, we've got Bran finally back again after what it's been an entire, it's been an entire season. So like 10 episodes. And we go straight, you know, we go back to him in the um, cave in the weirwood tree with Blood Raven, and he's having his vision. So the first thing that I thought about with this that I'm still a bit confused about is if Bran and Blood Raven are green seers and they're connected to the weirwood trees, and they the visions that mm -hmm. they see is because they're seeing through. The trees, I don't quite understand. All right, you know, for televisual purposes, whatever. But 
they were nowhere near a weirwood tree mm-hmm. in in they were mm-hmm. in the you know in the training yard in mm-hmm. in Winterfell. Yeah. Um, so that I, I don't I, I don't quite I can't get my head around um, that because any visions in the in the books have been in and around about right there by by a weirwood tree. Yes, and I, I I get her point, and we have actually talked about this. She brought it up uh, beforehand, um, which is why I'm nodding instead. of when I see where she's going with stuff, I just start like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, okay, I know what you're saying, and I kind of tune out. But um, I'm just making up for last week. <laughs> <laughs> the point being is, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the weirwood tree, from my argument to her when we talked about it, is you see it in one of the seasons, probably season one. It's overgrowing fucking Winterfell. Like, you can see it from... The shot of, like, say, when Bran and Rickon yeah, and no, Asha that. were oh, leaving. You can see the weirwood trees. So if you can sort of theoretically... Be in the vicinity be of... Be in the vicinity yeah. of... I think you just spit at me or I spit at no, myself. No, I thought you were going to smack me in the face as well, then. What the fuck? I need to... It's like that fucking shitting <laughs> seagull. <laughs> That's a different story. I've got to rip... My nose is running. I'm just going to run and get some tissue. Okay. Um, Anyways, so carry on about Bran and the weirwood tree. Yeah, the argument was, if you're, whatever the weirwood tree can see, Bran can theoretically be in there. So even if it's looking through a window, perhaps TOJ or anything like that, you could you could be in there. Um, running out of shit to say at the moment. Okay, right, I'm back. Good. Um, I thought it was great. It was really exciting that they went. They, the, the, you know, the, the opening scene of the episode was the vision. Yeah. Um, back yeah. in Winterfell, yeah. and you could kind of get home out of the way right out, off the bat. Yeah, you can figure out who's who with the children, and then that was a bit of an epic moment. Lyanna, you know, riding in on a, on horseback and kind of teasing her brothers and everything. Hodor. Um, it did. I mean, I think I appreciated it more on the second watch, on the first watch and I don't know if it was just because of the acting it seemed a bit it seemed a bit kind of like Dickensian Christmas Carol to me like felt like we were kind of mm-hmm. spinning through like mm-hmm. Ghost of Christmas Past or Jacob Marley yep, or exactly you know, and... that was <laughs> when you said that and she... <laughs> it says very Dickens like or what did you say you said something in reference Christmas Carol just the yeah. fact of them like standing like let's this mm. is your life, Brandon Stark. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. yeah. But the, um, I mean, there's a few things that I want to say here that, and we talked about the Blood Raven looked really surprised when Bran suddenly and very confidently just kind of astral projection down from the mm-hmm. from the um, yeah the, the thing that the they landing, stood on the, the landing the, that was stood on down yeah, into the yeah, yard. Yeah. Blood Raven kind of was like taken aback by that, and it's like, oh, that's so. Obviously, Bran's got some pretty strong power, maybe yeah. even more than everybody thinks. One of the things I was thinking about just recently, actually, I think probably just a few minutes ago, was because we watched it again just before we started doing this. Um, shit, I just lost my point. About his power and astral projection. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, uh, Blood Raven, I think that Blood Raven's actually trying to teach Bran mm-hmm. more. So I think Bran sort of surprised him at this point. I don't think he's shocked that you can do it because he, he follows behind right afterwards. It's just mm-hmm. like, oh shit, this kid's learning really quickly. Well, actually, now that you say that, it does sound like, well, oh, this has been going on for a while and Mira mm-hmm. complains about you know, oh, good point. how, yeah, long, yeah, yeah. how long yeah. this has been going on. So maybe, and there's, there is that mentor and, and pupil relationship. So maybe we've just come into it at the point where the pupil starts kind of, so the relationship changes yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and yeah, he's beginning to show even more. Now, would you think that that's sort of Blood Raven's purpose though? I mean, it's... What, people like have, pass the... Yeah, people have been saying that he's essentially passing the torch mm. and needs to teach Bran that. So what mm. happens if he gets to a point before Blood Raven's ready to go? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm kind of confused. Maybe Blood Raven just becomes obsolete. I'm confused as to what the problem is. 
by Brian just being able to do that, yeah. or is it just showing him that, that he is really good at uh, it? Yeah, well, it was it was it was an interesting point though. Um, I thought that Hodor. I thought Hodor or Will, Willis. Willis. Um, yes. It kind of reminded me of Sam in the Absolutely, practice yard when sure. he very first got to Castle Black. There's and actually a drawing somewhere out there that I've seen on the internet or maybe even... No, I don't think it's... I was going to say something else, but... Somewhere out there of Sam that looks almost identical to Willis. Yeah. Like, mm. yeah, like the, the book Sam that mm. looks identical to Willis. There was a quote the old or middle-aged nan <laughs> actually her age was completely you know the when it's when it comes into the detail and i'm sure we'll pick this up in the small council when we get into the minutiae of things but um she, looks about she wasn't the, yeah she wasn't the right age if she was uh, she was supposed to have been old like, when Nat when ned was was young and she she wasn't she was she looked like she was about well she's about 40. 60 and when you're a kid yeah, so I remember when my grandma mm. was 60, she always looked fucking old to me. God, and then that's really depressing. When she was actually, <laughs> well, don't say shit like that. <laughs> She's got a long ways to go. Um, I think that there was a yeah, there was a quote that she said to the to the to the boys as she was pulling Willis away from them, and she said. Um, if he ever learned to fight, he'd be unstoppable. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we've sure been talking like, about that. In I'll the get last, into my you know, shit afterwards. Yeah, so if you're trying yeah. to throw it at me, don't worry about it. Okay, um. all right. Um, <laughs> she the, knows the, we, we talk about this. The, the, uh, the only other thing that I wanted to say about Bran and Blood Raven and the scene and Mira is that um, when Blood Raven said. Uh, it's beautiful beneath the sea, um, we, yeah, but you know, don't spend so too much time. Obviously, oh, that's it. you know, there's a there's a patch face reference there, obviously, but also, um, I think that under the sea means something. I think it means like heaven or nirvana or home or I don't know because obviously patch face. Well, you get that under sort of kind of like from patch face. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. if you get that from that reference mm. but and if so what's wrong with drowning then yeah and there's the whole what's made dead you know what's dead what's dead will oh jesus what what, what is, is dead, dead will may, may never die yeah what comes back stronger and yeah all that kind of and, and of course the iron bomb were in this week mm. as well so mm. um yeah i didn't think about uh what you just said i thought about Patch face in the iron the, ore. The, the only thing that I can Drown say God. about the the bit with Mira and the the children of the you know is it was it a, a, a leaf or another version of well anyway one of the I'm children of the forest. It's leaf, yeah. Um, and she said, "Bran needs you," which kind of implies that there is going to be some big battle or big war, mm -hmm. probably towards the end of this season. Um, <clears throat> but one of the things I noticed was the door that Hodor came out of when he brought Bran. It's like perfectly square, rectangle. Door, perfect kind of rectangle door shape. And I just thought, so <laughs> the children of the forest are not only they're not only skilled in like manufacturing fireballs, but they've also they've also got like crazy joinery skills no, it's, as well. It's good. <laughs> I, I actually didn't ask you this, but I was wondering, like, was that a fucking rectangle <laughs> door last time you saw it? <laughs> was that there? That's just, um, it was just weird. Um, but yeah, what did you want to say about the, the brand scene? I got a lot on Bran. Uh, so starting with his vision, the, the scene with Liana coming in mm. when she runs around, uh, what, Benjamin and Ned yeah. practicing reminds me completely of Arya showing up Brandon. Or Bran. Mm -hmm. I'm for some reason starting to say Brandon a lot. And I think it's because of fucking Leaf in this episode calling him Brandon Stark. Mm -hmm. um, but when Arya shows up Bran in episode one when she with the arrow. And she fucking gets the perfect shot and Bran's like, can't do it. Do you remember that? Episode one? You know what I've just thought? No. When So when she says... 
I didn't. I, I didn't realise that she she actually said Brandon Stark needs you. Is going to yes. need you. Yes. Yes. I wonder if Mira ends up fighting for the on the Night King side then. No, I'm pretty sure I've watched. I know what your your thinking is, but what she's talking about sounds to me like Bran. She's just being diplomatic. Right. Like I've wondered why okay. she was calling him Brandon Stark too. Yeah. That's kind of why it's stuck yeah, in my okay. head at this moment. Um, but she references him. He'll need you in there, and then again when he's yeah. outside of there. So I don't think she's talking about any other okay. versions of a Brandon Stark. I could be wrong. Um, where was I? Sorry, I totally no, derailed that's fine. you then. That's fine. Um, that's cool. So you were talking about saying, I don't yeah. know why I keep so, calling you No, Brandon. it was like a perfect, uh, not a perfect, but a recreation of that episode yeah. one scene where Arya makes a shot and shows yeah. up Brandon. And she comes in and yeah. like, stop showing off, Liana. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then she challenges or says to fight Hodor or whatever. Yeah. You have a uh, Liana area comparison. I don't know if you wanted to bring that up, Piercy. Now this is me throwing it to you. Oh, <laughs> you didn't expect uh, that, did you? The, uh, Yes, there are, were comparisons between Arya and Liana, and it's been referenced both in the show and several times in the books. Um, <clears throat> and I left uh, uh, Callum, actually, so hi, shout out to Callum. Everybody should subscribe to Callum's new channel. Um, he asked a question. And he's also in the comments yeah. of last week's episode. Um, about R plus L, oh, which we don't really... Do. I mean, the thing is it's going to be coming up in the next episode you, in the... Um, Tower of Joy. In the trailer, the Tower of Joy was... To, oh, yeah, it looked like young Ned. I thought the actor... It was just like like a younger version of Sean Bean. You didn't, but I was like, wow, the accent and everything. It was brilliant. Um, Too quick and fucking. Yeah, it just it does. You'll see. You'll see next week. I'm just, it, they've picked really. They've really cast that that role really well. That actor looked like a young Sean Bean to me. Um, but anyway, sorry. Uh, Callum asked the question you know who about. Looks like a young Sean Bean. Who? Young Sean Bean, who looks nothing like that guy. <laughs> I bet he does. I bet no, he, he does. Sh Callum asked the question about R plus L equals J. You know, it's a strong okay. theory. You know, exploring other theories and things. And and I said I've not I've not really got an alternative. And I do agree it's a strong theory, but I am a bit of a skeptic, and I've got lots of questions. And one of them relates to this reference between Liana and, and Arya. Arya and the comparisons. And which people use it's, a lot to yeah. promote R plus L equals J. Do they? Yeah, they say because Liana looks like, Ar or Arya looks like Liana and John looks like... Oh, the, the, the beans, you mean. Yeah, no, I'm yeah, talking yeah, yeah. about the personality oh, no, I know, and the character. But the, the, I'm just saying that that's, yeah. it's something else that's used to argue RLJ. But yeah, the, the, the small point of a much bigger and separate video, I would argue, argue mm -hmm. is that this comparison Absolutely. between Liana and Arya is if... Liana really is like Arya, of what we know of Arya, would she, A, allow mm. herself to be Again, I've heard kidnapped? all this before, so... Would she, would she allow herself to be kidnapped in, like, a fairy tale, or swept away by the prince in some kind of, like, fairy tale Disney mm -hmm. sort of way that you might imagine we would fancy more like Sansa would be thinking about than Arya? Yeah. And B... If it's not being swept away by the by the prince, um, that she's like captured and raped again, it's like if that if you're comparing that with Arya and what we know of Arya, if they really are that comparable, then I don't think it would. I I think that Rhaegar and Lyanna, he was trying to help her. He wasn't trying to do. It. He wasn't trying to create a child with her. He was trying to help her because. He felt responsible for something that 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 happened prior, you know, something that happened off page. I think, at all. yeah, something before, um, yeah, before the song was played, before Liana wept. I, I personally think something fucking happened out there. But that's somewhere. a separate 
we you know we can go into that yeah. in a separate, and I'm sure that we'll probably be going into it in much more detail next week after that because it looks like it is the Tower of Joy. Yeah, we'll wait next for week. things that actually yeah. move us into topics like this. I, I just wanted you to make that Liana area comparison because okay. I know you had it. Yeah. Um. Now I do have a one B too. So in previous reviews, I think I've said that. Uh, certain events in the show are actually giving us the histories yeah. like we'll see things like marjorie and uh, just touch on this super lately because of what we just said marjorie and tom and talking about uh my brother's been jailed how come this happened he should be fine and yeah. blah 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 that's all I'm going to say about that. But I think those are, you can actually equate that conversation into something that's happened in the histories, namely people that we were just talking about. Um, but that's I'm just going to leave that there, and this wasn't sort of scripted. But so the one B is this is what I mean by the show gives us this. Yeah. But now they're giving us a history. With to fill in the gaps that we didn't have previously. Yeah. 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 Um, and so it's like a reverse motion, notion, something, yeah. something that yeah. we're, yeah. we're doing. Sorry. No, 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 I understand. Um, but they're just <laughs> laughing hysterically at me. What the fuck did you just say? Um, um, anything else on Bran? Of what oh, I got with? fucking this. Okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> all Bran, and then I got more Bran. So well, two. Remember to save some the small council. One B. So two is just a, a note that Hodor could actually fight. Um, yeah, well, that was my question to you: is what do you think happened to Hodor? Okay, we'll get into that a right. bit later. Okay. Um, right. But so we, I don't know if anybody else caught it because it took us a long time, and Claire's actually speaks English because she is English. <laughs> so I figured I asked her like what I mean what I did, understand British accents yeah. so what yeah. did Liana say to Hodor because it starts off yeah, that was tricky um, and I got it yeah. before you did yeah, yeah, yeah. and what she says to him is uh, oh, uh, Benjen Benjen always lifts his chin when he's about to charge yeah and then Hodor replies to her and he, he lowers, lowers it, it when he's about to dodge yeah so we don't, by the looks of things, Hodor has never fought in this with them before. Yeah. But he's been studying. He he's understands been watching the techniques. Yeah. And and yeah. he he knows. And he was actually gung ho. He's like getting getting yeah, all yeah, fucking yeah. ready. When we see Bran work Hodor later on. Yeah. And make Hodor want to fight. He's hold, like fuck that fucked Hodor up. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so. What do you think? Uh, how did he become Hodor? How did he become Hodor? Now that I go to uh, number... Okay, so when Bran gets out of it, out of the vision, and he looks at Hodor and he's telling the story after he, you know, bitches out fucking yeah, yeah, Blood yeah. Raven. Yeah, yeah, and he says He says were... to Hodor... I saw you. I saw you. You could talk. Mm -hmm. What happened? And Hodor looks at him. And he says, Hodor. And this is where I've learned how to speak Hodor now. Uh, I, I, will, fluent, I will work fluent. on a book and I will sell it. Mm -hmm. $50 a book. The total language, mm -hmm. everything. That, that's Different sure. dialects, yeah. Yeah. But so, what did, so can you tell us what Hodor said? He said, you did. Ooh. What happened? What happened, Hodor? And, but then you have this fucking look between Hodor and Bran where they're just fucking staring at each other. And then Bran asks him, where's Mira? And I understood this one too. He says, Hodor. Which means, out there. <laughs> so this book is very priceless and $50 is a steal. <laughs> but I believe you. I believe it is, you. if you actually watch the scene. And so he says, how did Bran do that? Well, then? I don't know. Now, I don't know what that means. It could mean Hodor saying, you did, means Brandon Stark. Maybe that's just, maybe old Brandon Stark 
Right, okay. Somebody who can explain this in a lot more detail um, is this specific thing about Bran time travelling is Don Willey and his, his, he's got a great theory, actually. So check out Don Willey's yes, channel. Yes, and I would have gotten to that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I just Holy wanted, fuck. I just wanted to mention it, but yeah. Yeah. So, no, absolutely. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to be saying here plays with... Uh, Don Willie's theory, mm. um, and I don't know if I'm looking at it just because I've heard his theory, mm. and I, I kind of really like that theory. It's a pretty fucking deadly theory, but so much shit stuck out at me this episode that uh, you could apply to certain things. So there's an aspect of it being maybe Brandon Stark, the brother, or you did mm. Brandon Stark, the current. Um, back look, to the history. See, the problem Bran's, I have. Bran has been. So, Bran's been there before, and it's that Wheel of Time thing so that LaDonna keeps talking about. But Bran's been there before, and maybe he tried to walk Hodor before, and it freaked him out completely. And uh, Willis, I mean, if maybe he yeah. tried to walk Willis but see, at some point in the past. So, it's getting really kind of. My first question was, when when, I, when we first talked about this, was the timeline doesn't add up of uh, Hodor being Hodor. Right. If it was Bran warging him from Bran's birth, you mm. would think that the story of what happened to Hodor would be a lot more fresh. So it had to happen before yeah. sort of these kids were born, because mm. um, none of them actually know what happened to Hodor. Mm. So it's either old Bran... Um, it's Brandon Stark and the histories and Hodor sort of remembers it. Oh, well, it was you. Mm. You did. Mm. Um, or he got kicked in the head by a horse because he's a stable boy. Which is possible. Yeah. <laughs> also, be. so this is another little point there. But when uh, Nan says he he's not going to learn to fight, he's a stable boy. Mm. I fully think that has double meaning. He's He's a stable person. He doesn't need to learn how to fight. He's not... Blah 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 blah. Yeah, just just <laughs> fucking. He's a stable uh, boy. Okay. Um, um. I'll be happy if you got kicked in the head by a horse, also. But anything I else think... about Mira or Blood Raven back in the cave? Quit reading my notes. And... Well, I want us to discuss other areas as well. Well, it's I know, been half an hour already. This is where the bulk of my shit is. So, deal. Okay, I'm dealing. Okay, so Liana looking at Bran. Yes. When uh. Yeah. So that's foreshadowing when Bran's actually going to try to uh, communicate with somebody oh, in the world. Um, right. Okay. That's just like he he thinks she's looking at her now. He's gonna think, right. well, what happens if I reach out to them? Okay, and, and he's getting more the, powerful and. Wow, yeah. So we That'd know what cool. happened. We know what ha can happen from the book. So it's with Ned. So. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you touched on that. Stable boy double meaning. Hodor was either warged, thumped on the head, or kicked by a horse. I think we covered that. These weren't as deep as I thought. Okay. So the mirror thing is, uh, Brands. She's upset that Brands living in mm. in the box. Mm. He's he's watching the world. This is mm. real re real world metaphor here. He's watching the world move around outside of the fucking yeah, cave. So he, he, yeah, he's trees. having his like, adventures. Like us watching and she's TV just stuck in there and everything them. like that. And she's she's like fucking. Well, there's a fight going on. Mm. I, I mm. want to fight it. But what Bran's actually doing is going inward. He's fucking going to end up fucking figuring out a lot of shit before he leaves the cave to fucking save, you know, the mm. goddamn world. So you mm. got to look inward before you move outward. Mm. And if you move outward, then fucking mm. you got to be able to cut yourself off because that's how people fall, which we'll play into mm. later. But, oh, what's it say? The world slash the world is moving ahead. So, yeah, we're done. Mm -hmm. Okay, move on. All right. Okay, let's talk about, let's go to the wall then. 
um, because we touched on the end scene. So let's talk. So we've got two scenes at the wall. We've got um, when (laughs) for me, the best part of this entire episode, including John coming back, is 1-1 smacking that Night's Watch guy against the wall. I know it's a, it's a reflection of um, Patrick, Sir Patrick Malister, one of the Queen's men in the books, because he swings him around. Oh, yeah, 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 when he um, was getting teased. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. yeah um, but it just made, me, <laughs> just made me think. It's one of those moments when, you know, when like in life, when somebody's just irritating you, or somebody's just kind of like, it just feels like that kind of like flicking in your ear kind of thing, yeah. And you, you just wish that you were able to just go like against the wall. So yeah, for me, like I don't know, what does that say about me? What does that say about me as a person? I don't know, but that was a real like, yes! I don't think it says anything about you as a person. I'm sure everybody uh, watching this is right there beside you. I loved that bit. It was, it, you're, you're absolutely right. Oh. I think Jon Snow would have been my favourite bit. Any First any scene, it. It, it, when it comes to likes, dislikes, and favourite scenes or what have you, any scene that either Brienne's in or that 1-1 one, one is in, that's the scene. Well, doesn't you, really matter well, what happens, you that's know, the scene. 1-1 one, one is my dude. I've picked him for <laughs> yeah. fucking ages. So. And I was well, happy. Was but great. I do think that the John scene, when I watched it, was the most fucking, like, what's oh, going to yeah, fucking happen? Yeah. Um, when I first watched it, but every time I watched it afterwards, which has been about four or five now, I fall asleep a few times, mm. um, has been 1-1. One, one. And yeah. it was just awesome. And the way he threw him on the ground and the blood splatters on the ground. <laughs> it and... just was like, so quick. It's fantastic. Oh, I did miss a, a brand thing. So, what was it? You actually, that was the part where you originally threw to me and I totally skipped it. Um. What does Nan say? They oh, say yeah, where well, Nan... Uh, if, if Hodor was... If he learned to fight, he'd be unstoppable. Look at the size of him. If he learned to fight, he would be unstoppable. Mm. That's uh, definitely a throw to the mountain, being unstoppable, which you see in this episode, and the mm. death. It's also a throw to Hodor and Woon Woon, and what happens with Woon Woon, because Hodor has giant blood, which is mentioned in that thing, but who knows, maybe the mountain does too. Mm. But, um, yeah, I, I swear that that's the, the point that we're getting there. Look at the size of him. If he knew how to fight, he'd be unstoppable. Mm-hmm. The mountain knows how to fight. Mm-hmm. And from what we know so far, he's been unstoppable. So, yeah, I think that was a little bit of coolness. I thought Ed was looking particularly Lord Commander-ish. Cool. So, which makes me think maybe he's going to ultimately take over as the next Lord Commander. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with John. Will John be John? In the trailer, there's mm-hmm. kind of, it looks like he's, it looks like him from the back, and there's somebody saying, uh, some kind of god, and it just makes you think of like, I don't know, well, I think it's and like Tormund you know, saying uh, that they're looking at you like you're a god. Now, mm. personally, I hope that that's just Tormund talking to a corpse. Or a zombie corpse that's not doing anything. He's woken up and people are like, oh, but he's right. not actually doing anything. Um, just because I have my own little weird theory there. But if it's John leading, which I think it is, just because of the trailers, you kind of get that glimpse of somebody that looks like John. So let's talk about but this last I was going to say, uh, I do believe Barr has a theory where uh, Ed is the 999th Lord Commander. Right, okay. I'm just saying. Yeah. Right. Uh, but he did, to me, he looked very, he looked like he was in charge, he looked like he was in command, he looked, in fact, no, he just, he I, looked, I, like, I he, he looked yeah. like the Lord yeah. Commander. Um, and he looks like he's working quite nicely in tandem with Tormund as well, it was like yeah. they made well, quite a went, good double he act. he went to get him. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So why do you think it even occurs to Davos to resurrect John? I mean, just the way he go, he talks to Mel, and he's 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 like, it just make it's just like, why? Yeah. I wonder where that came from. I mean, obviously, he's seen her do some strange well, magic stuff. What does he say? And... Well, Davos is a sailor, mm. so he's probably heard About stories red, and red shit. Priests, yeah, different uh, skills and stuff. But I mean, he's never. But 
It just it just he does ask her, is, is this possible? Do you know how to do this? It's mm. not like he said, well, you can do this. So he's just like, he knows she's magical. But why? Which I think is the most important part of your question. Like, yeah. why would he think John needs to be resurrected? I really don't know. Mm. Um, I do have individual theories. And this would tend to go against it. But I could actually spin it to what what I would actually spin my theory to in regards to everything is that John's confused for somebody else right. in, in general. So, well, <clears throat> but who knows if that's going to work out. The, uh, I thought it, and we were both on the edge of our seat with like, is it going to happen? It looks like it's not going to happen. What's going on here? And then there was ghost under the table asleep. You're jumping to the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if there's anything that you well, want to fill in... we have a shitload in. more of other scenes and shit. No, I'm just talking about the wall. Everything that happens at the oh, wall. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha. So I know it's at the end of the episode, but it's, it's at the wall. Um, and we, we may as well discuss yeah, yeah. it all in sure, the same place. Sure. So I think what happened was she didn't have faith and conviction in yeah, well, what, said this what she was week. yeah no in what she was doing though even though davos was kind of putting pressure on her to you know you've got and she said i haven't got this this isn't my skill i haven't got this skill yes i know that it's, it can be done i've seen it be done before it shouldn't be possible and she she you know she was i think that she was trying it, it, she didn't have conviction in it which is why there was some kind of delay or it wasn't a hundred percent of a result and then at the very end, you see Ghost open his eyes and wake up, and then almost instantaneously, John mm-hmm. wakes up. Mm-hmm. So I think what happened was it was this kind of two-way thing. So I think Mel's magic kind of provided a an opportunity and a gateway for basically for Ghost to bring John back. So it was Ghost that, in my eyes, that resurrected John. Not I think the way they did it in the scene was it cut it captures. Every single poss- possibility. It could be that, yeah, Mel did it, Ghost did it, how was Davos involved? You know, there's lots of things to discuss, and I'm sure we'll go into it in more detail. Are you sorry? On the small council. But did I, you just say that you think Ghost resurrected John? Yeah, I think, no, I, I think Ghost was responsible for either expelling him from him into uh, back okay. into John, uh, or, okay. yeah. Gotcha. It was like kind of like basically Mel loaded the gun. And ghost fired the bullet. That's how I saw it. I could see that. I'm still. I, I. I mean, honestly, I don't know. Um, You're just happy he's back. <laughs> no, I would have been happy if he wasn't back. Really? I mean, I think he's always going to return. But yeah. if he just stayed fucking dead and nothing happened, I would have been yeah. cool with that. Yeah. Um. I. Yeah, I don't know. Is he in Ghost and somebody else is in John? Uh, th- that possibility is there. Ghost woke up first. I think um, he's going to come back like Beric Dondarrion did, pretty much exactly the same. But he's going to be able to recognise that a he doesn't he's doesn't have to he's he's outlived his vows and the and the Night's Watch which would have to happen anymore. if uh, any sort of John Targaryen things work out and stuff like that. Well, he has to be expelled from his vows if he's ever going to leave the Night's Watch. Yeah, well, for whatever happens for the next phase of, mm-hmm. of him, I don't think he's going to be... I think he'll he'll be in the, that location for, for a while, but I don't think he's going to be... I think somebody else is going to be Lord Commander, and I think he's going to have to have a think about does it does he do the vows still apply? See, my argument is but, always, like, technically he was... Not ever John Snow, so he never made the vows because he's always been John. Right, Stark. okay, that's really down to semantics, I guess. It but is. But I I also think that um, now that he's uh, he's back and Ramsey, they didn't know that John had. Di- nobody really knows. No. Outside no. of the wall that John died. Good point. Died. I know what you're going for. So maybe this is going to be Pink Letter. Which it. You know, definitely an argument for that bastard in this show. And, yeah. yeah, you, you know, and um, maybe yeah, maybe it's going to appear, and that's that's what triggers the the the, the of the internet of calling it the battle of the bastards, and I think that will be at least one of the battles it, later on in this season is John and the wildlings and the remaining loyal Night's Watch. 
maybe with Ed and, and Tormund versus Ramsay and the Northern Lords, but the Northern Lords ultimately will betray Ramsay. And I think Rickon might be thrown into the mix as well somehow. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's what's going to be. Can you tell all that, like, essentially from the trailer, though? Um... Well, not all, not as yeah. much detail, but you knew the battle was coming. You knew it was going to be the yeah. wildlings. You knew. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying right. that's you know the 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 letter is likely to happen to then kind of trigger that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think sure that was great. <laughs> I think letters coming great. Um. Way, right. Way 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 crazy. Okay. Have we finished discussing the wall? I think so. I don't know. You tell me. What well, have you finished? I have. You got anything I don't else know to say if I on the wall? Or not. I can't tell. I don't write things down like the wall. We're talking about the wall. It's not how well, I keep my Well, the next notes. place to go to I is. I told you we need to go by people. Okay, well, let's discuss Cersei then. You had a good point about Cersei. Yeah. Um, what did we get first, though, was uh, the dude in the. Oh, God. If we go by each character appearing on screen, that's really tedious. Let's just I'm go not, by location. to the Cersei thing, because my question about that whole fucking thing was, how did Robert Strong know to kill that dude? Because Cersei seems right. like she's been okay. locked up. Right, sorry. So we're talking about the scene with the King's Landing guy from the crowd. Yeah, the guy from the crowd. During the Walk of Shame. Yeah. And my, yeah. my question was, how did Robert Strong know to kill that guy? Yes. But the answer is there, and it's the the waitress who you see her three times. As soon as he says Cersei, she kind of looks at him. Yeah. Then she serves him yeah. his drink, and then she walks up the stairs to leave, mm. and she kind of sizes him up and like takes note yeah, of him. Yeah, it's not that obvious on the first viewing, but you can you can you can, you can see her when she's yeah. like very Going obviously when she's in mm. the uh, thing pouring his drink, and she kind of rolls her eyes at him. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah. No, I was very confused as to how uh, he knew to kill that person because it looks like Cersei has been stuck in the Red Keep forever. It's not mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that. But obviously, people are coming to her. Kyburn. Kyburn has yeah, little, little birds spies. now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, anyways, Cersei. So my, my point was the thread, which seems like a real fucking ridiculous sort of seen but that's Cersei unraveling that's that's mm. why you see that which is fucking cool yeah I, like I mean because first we're like what the fuck is she playing with but yeah she's pulling a piece of thread, thread away from the clothes like, why are you showing this on like what's yeah. what's the point point? and that, when that's when, the point. when Rob, Robert Strong walks in she just kind of goes like that and yeah, it's well, like, when you said look professional you said that Cersei unraveling and I thought that was brilliant because I do think that that's what's going to happen for the rest of the of the season. She's just going to get progressively yeah, crazier and just, just unravel. So, yes. yeah, I like that. You're absolutely right. She's going to unravel the rest of the season. Um, is, there, is there anything that you wanted to say about Marcella or... The one thing... Cersei and Tom. And Tom was a bit chinless this episode i thought it was very kind of like you know that was cool because he owned like, up that he was chinless yeah. and he's looking to change so that's that's pretty cool mm -hmm. um the one thing that i took from this and i'm still kind of on the fence about stannis i think that he's still alive i haven't seen a fucking body yet so but when uh jamie and the high sparrow are talking he basically says the same thing to uh, Jamie that Stannis said to Brienne, which is, go on, do your duty, or do it, go on, do it. Yeah. Sort of the exact same thing. And again, he walks out fine. Of course, he mm -hmm. had a bunch of people. But if Jamie tried to kill him at that point, mm -hmm. um, those guys weren't around yet. So, yeah. It's that that's all I got from it. I don't actually think that that's even intentional. That's just where I mm. kind of the dialogue was kind of like go go ahead, you yeah. should do it if that's you know, do your duty. But the the high sparrow scene was 
Oh, intriguing go with this news to me. I, 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 and Jonathan Price is such a great actor. He really expresses that kind of sneering, like bubbling well, under the it. surface resentment that the highest fire has. He did it absolutely great yeah. in uh, that scene. I think what you count. So he went to go through the seven. Times. Yeah, he went. Well, he started off by sort of. Going through oh, the, I told the, you this the, one. the seven gods, and he stopped yeah. at the warrior and yes. just kind of and then went. And he looks at Jamie and sneered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think when he said, "Who are we? We have no names, no family." That reminded me of the faceless men. That was a very good point, and I saw that when we just watched it this time. And uh, that was fucking. Very similar. What they what he described is the hey, faceless we? men. We, are, we, are we no have one. no names. Yeah. We have no families, which yeah. is what Arya's going through right mm -hmm. now. Mm. You you don't have a family. You don't have a name. Mm. You're you're no one. Mm. We are no one. So that was that's an excellent parallel. So maybe the faceless men really do want to overtake an empire. Who knows? Yeah. Um. So. Um. Do you think that, I mean, Tommen asks Cersei, I want to be strong, will you help me? Do you, what do you think that Cersei and Tommen's relationship is going to be like this season? She seemed very kind of passive, passive aggressive behavior. She was quite quiet. Monstrous. But at the same time, there's some seething stuff behavior. going on under the surface with Cersei. She's, she's definitely acting seething. it really well. Well, of course, and we've got the yeah. unraveling thing. Um, Do you think I've... Tommen will die this season? Sure, let's do it. Let's fucking ice them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, let's get it done with. They're moving at a fucking pace right now. So yeah, yeah. Might yeah. as well. <laughs> get rid of the last thing. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's see what the fucking new shit is. Um, yeah. Do you think that Cersei will somehow be responsible for Tommen's death? Well, I still have a theory that I think Cersei, in whatever roundabout way it is, is responsible for all her children's death. Mm. Um, that's my my book consensus. Um, and it's not really even research, that's just a fucking hunch. Mm. Um, but there is an argument that she actually... Was I know Littlefinger's taking credit for it, but if I was Littlefinger, I would have taken credit for it too. It's an argument that she accidentally poisoned Joffrey in uh, the purple poisoned wedding. Right. So yeah, this uh, I like this idea of Cersei being like this self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else that we want to say about Cersei, Jaime, King's Landing scenes, or should so. we? Do uh, the mountain again. Just a, just something I noticed is uh, when they have the scene with what was it? Just a leader of the guards, I guess. No, nobody special. Um, with all the guards stopping her from going to Marcella's funeral, they all have their fucking shit opened up. The helmets. The helmets. <laughs> so they all look like fucking weird little fish with their faces there. But the images you walk around and yeah. it's not a time of war nobody's going to be stabbing you in the face so you walk around you can breathe and shit the mountains got the same mm. thing but his is fucking closed which mm. is just like can't look at that guy's face and he's also taken a vow of silence until mm -hmm. all the lannister enemies all are her dead. all her enemies are her dead. enemies yeah. are dead yeah. yeah um he's scary 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 I like him. Character, yeah. like weird blue skin underneath the helmet. <laughs> um, let's go to Marine and discuss Marine. I don't know why people don't think that it's Ned's head on, it's on the mountain. Is it just because he's called Robert Strong they think that it's Rob's head? Like Ned was actually beheaded. Oh, there's all sorts of theories of who they... Yeah, and tarred. So to, yeah. thick black yeah. blood mm. seems to be like Ned, yeah. So, Marine. We, okay. So we go to um, a scene with Varys, Tyrion, Missandei, and Grey Worm, and they're discussing, you know, the the points of the day, and and the 
uh, Miss Andy and Grey Worm look devastated that it looks like a side of Marine everywhere has gone back to how it was. So the slavers have gone uh-huh. back to, uh-huh. to to the old ways. Um, uh, the slavers have taken back Slavers Bay. See that little dot on the screen right there? Yeah. I had it right on my nostril when I was down there like that, and I thought it had like a big snot How much wine in my have nose. you had? I'm just saying. How I'm, much wine have you had? It's uh, my second glass, <laughs> <Okay>. my dear. <laughs> um, they talk about the dragons haven't been eating, and that keeping them, and Tyrion says keeping them in captivity isn't the isn't the the done thing with dragons. And Miss Andy questions him, and he says that fantastic line. Um, I drink. I drink. And, and I know things. Fears. Let's do it. We should have started it with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we drink and we know things. <laughs> Welcome to our. Uh, yeah. Well, so we've got we've got Tyrion being quite brave here, and you can see him almost doing this risk assessment in his head when he asks Masande. How, how how often were you around the the so he's thinking about things like you know probability and and you know is this going to happen and whether you can see him doing this risk that's assessment that's pretty fucking deadly because no I didn't think about that he, but yeah he, yeah yeah he, no, he, he says say it, for how, sure. how often yeah, were you yeah. around them and blah, yeah blah, he's blah, assessing friendly. the situation so, but yeah. he's also using his nice. knowledge of that's dragons cool. that's it? really cool yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's also using like his knowledge that. of dragons to to kind of think about his next step but plus he's being quite bold and he's also really excited about seeing and meeting the dragon yeah. so he's go, he's going for it um but yeah you can see him working out you know it, how much of a risk this is likely to really be mm-hmm. and then he goes down into i mean you, you said something about it about the size of dragons and i mean one of the things that's going to happen from this scene undoubtedly is a lot of people will come forward and say well this this proves surely that the dragons didn't kill and eat him that he's got valerian blood or he's targaryen he's a secret mm-hmm. targaryen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but i thought it was interesting the the the, the thing that you said about the dragons well, being small it, it's nothing that i have actually worked out and you had spoken to me about this earlier i think you commented someplace i haven't actually put any sort of thought together but it did draw me to arguments of Tyrion being stunted and small and um Tyrion is a character who's often described as being in the box he's kept in the box well he was in captivity he was in the the barrel or the box the yeah. barrel in the in the books but yeah. he was in like a cage mm-hmm. box thing on mm-hmm. his travels to Essex. but also probably in his whole life he's a person who has been contained mm. um and once he's allowed to shine Tyrion mm. fucking shines he mm. tyrions the fuck out of it mm. <laughs> so he um this kind of relates back to the quote that Mary says way back in like season two where he says about power and the perception of power and there was something about even a, a small man can cast a, a giant, giant shadow. shadow yeah and I think yeah. what's McCorrell that says that he sees them fucking running around with huge fucking, yeah, yeah yeah snarling in the midst of it all and yeah the only only thing that I would say, other thing that I would say about that scene, that again, it's a nitpicky kind of detail thing, is it seemed very easy for Tyrion just to reach up and undo the chain, and it's like really, the given the height of him, that he was going to, even they though they were it. leaning down. I mean, I did like that with the way the dragons kind of seemed to listen to what he was saying, mm-hmm. um, and and one of them put the head you know one of them put the head down for him to unchain it so yeah maybe you would have been able to reach so my but i just only... thought <laughs> i always look for things that are likely implausible but well i think the the ease of which he fucking pulled those things mm-hmm. out it's not like he flipped a latch he just yeah, yeah. pulled out a thing yeah. i think yeah. that's not a very safe fucking dragon mm-hmm. machine mm-hmm. dragon containment unit <laughs> he just <laughs> Pull a fucking DCU. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get the DCUs on. <laughs> uh, is there anything else 
what you want he, to say he about put this? down so my only argument against Tyrion being a Targ is mm. before he interacted with the dragons and this has actually a number of different possibilities if you think about it is even going to Quentin mm. but he uh, he puts down the torch he doesn't touch them with the torch and there's actually they show him putting down the torch mm. then he goes and associates with them and <laughs> I don't know why I say words like that. <laughs> and then yes, they show them. him picking up the torch again afterwards and <laughs> running away. But yeah. the whole time he interacts with them, he's not got the fire, he's not got the torch mm. with mm -hmm. him, which is, they make a point of showing it to us. Mm. What that point is, I don't know. <laughs> okay. It's just there's a point of like, Oh, look, he's putting down the torch. Right. Now he's with the dragons. Oh, okay. Now he's picking up the torch and leaving the dragons. He didn't have the torch mm. when he was with the dragons. Now they, they made that fairly obvious. So, and for no real reason. I so do with like, Quentin, it yeah. would be, the argument would be, with the uh, shield mirror, or yeah, at yeah. least going to what Stannis was saying that threw to him the mirror, Maybe if they see fire, they think that it's enemy, like just dragon versus dragon, right. like seeing the face or yeah. flame. I, I mean, I fucking have I, no idea. I, I, just, just thinking out of my ass. Tyrion was never going to just be burned and eaten by dragons. You know, he's too Not important fucking, in the sh in yeah. the show. Um, People were saying yeah. that earlier, right? Like, I did. I did like the, the the fact that they brought out Tyrion's. Like childhood fantasies and knowledge that he had, and all the readings Good point. that he had and about that's, dragons. Uh, see, that's that's very prevalent in the books. You're right. And my what I went to was I'm very disappointed that we don't get to see fucking mean, mad, sort of like grumpy, depressed Tyrion running mm. through here. With like the, we don't see it with the poison mushrooms in his sock. Poison mushrooms. Suicidal just Tyrion. The thoughts yeah. and the the, the mm. attitude, like. What I was thinking of, he keeps fucking trying to insult Varys about his cock. Yeah. I thought maybe that was supposed to be it, but then even then it's like still well, charming no, Tyrion. Tyr Tyrion's very different in the books at this stage. Yeah, and yeah, he's, he's gone through different dark. experiences. Yeah. He's not really marine, for mm -hmm. sure. Not at this mm -hmm. stage, mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. um, shall we briefly discuss Arya? There was a very short scene in... Bravos. Yeah, I really got nothing for Arya, but yeah, lay it on me. Just to summarise it, really, that she's continue, obviously continuing a training. There was the link to the back to mm -hmm. the title, Home or Homeward mm -hmm. Bound, going back to the House of Black and White. Um, and yeah, that's I, actually again, kind I, of a scary notion, though. If the, we consider that her home mm, at this point, in well, the stage like that. I know, I, I get your point where she would consider that her home. That's where she's. Yeah. Fine, you don't have to be blind anymore, blah, blah. Um, and just also the fact that, that she's clearly home. been on the streets and, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, but I think it's just going to be a case of her continuing her training. Maybe she'll be, um, well, she's been blind Beth, so maybe she'll now be, yeah, you know, one of the other saying. characters. Come on, come on. What, you want me to out. hurry up? No, spit out where you get, get to the point. There isn't a point, really. I was just going to ask you what do you think's next for Arya, but you don't seem to give a shit. <laughs> well, we already had... I was just summarising it, that's all. Oh, whatever. So what do we have? We had her at... Uh, you know I can't fucking think back. We had her at killing Marin Trant, which was mm -hmm. the dude she kills in the Mercy chapter. So... That's next, but I think what you're getting at is you're going. We're going to see her go to the play. So you've said that's, that. You've I've saw, already said that's going to yeah. that's going to cut that her her story arc's going to culminate in that. I think this season will be the play. We've already seen her fuck with Bresco sell the fucking cockles and clabs and shit. So, mm -hmm. and now we've seen her blind girl, mm -hmm. and we kind of saw her already as ugly girl. Mm, kind of. Just gonna, we just haven't seen her as Mercy. Maybe we won't see Arya for a few episodes, who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Um, okay. What, no, just let me go on that Arya scene, because I thought it was the worst. Um, right. First of all, when she's fighting the Waif, the Waif fucking standing beside her and says something, and Arya fucking swings forward. Like, no. 
You mm. would you would know that the person's. I don't care how fucking whatever your senses yeah, are. If you hear somebody right. yeah. talking from one side, you don't swing forward. Mm. So that was pretty dumb. And then just the whole Jack and asking her the questions. It was like, really? Do you, would you expect her to say anything other than what she said? Mm. It's obvious that if she said Arya Stark, he's going to be pissed off at her. She mm. knows that. We know that. Yeah. So it was kind of a stupid sort of like, you know, oh, let's get through this big test and see if he passed. Wow. <laughs> kind of <laughs> shitty. Right. That was it. That was my yeah. worst scene of the fucking... Scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about Winterfell and Roose and Ramsay, because that was, whoa, that was probably... I don't know if that was my worst scene, actually. What was actually. our little conversation when that was happening? Um, uh, what was I saying? No, I don't know what you mean. Well, because in the comments... Uh, last week, somebody had asked about uh, a, a certain question, and my, my response was, if Walda has a son, then mm -hmm. Roos can kill Ramsay, but he can't kill Ramsay until Walda has a son. So first thing we get is Walda having a son, mm -hmm. which kind of like, uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Um, and so that that's what my panic was, was, oh, shit. Claire, it's gonna, who, who's yeah, it going to yeah. be? Is it going to be Roos killing Ramsay or right, Ramsay yeah, killing yeah. Roos? I, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. You knew that one of them was, it was, yeah. yeah. Um, it was tense. Yeah. Um, so, Roos is sat at the table. The Meister comes in and says that the baby boy, Ramsay gets, walks Kevin over Moore, I think to. Kevin was, by the way. Who's that? The guy that. Asked oh, the, the question. No, the guy that asked the question. Sorry. Oh right, okay. And I, <laughs> I, I might be wrong with that too. So if you are the person that asked the question and you're not Kevin Moore, <laughs> I apologize. I'm just trying to go through my limited list of comments. So there's there's a car stark there in the room as well who uh, so witnesses everything and then very quickly says, oh you know it's time for new it's new new blood in the north, um, and also before. Ramsay stabs Roos in the in the very kind of red weddingish you know full circle kind of way. Um, he says we don't need all of the North. We've got the Umbers, the Carstarks, and the Mandalays. So the Mandalays again are mentioned. So I'm looking forward to. And I think there's been actors cast in the roles of the, some of the like Lord Mandalay, Wyman Mandalay, which would be which would be great. <laughs> Who I oh. John Goodman would make a fucking great, great mm. wine in that. Yeah. That'd be um, awesome. I thought... He played a British guy before in King Ralph, you know. The, the, the most horrific part of all of this, this scene with the Boltons in the north was poor old Walder and the, new, and the newborn, like the, the, the quickest, quickest reign of like Warden of the North ever. This poor little baby Bolton and Waldo, and he, when he leads them into the the kennels. But you'd, I did notice there was a flash, just as he called the dogs on onto her. He kind of he, he kind of looks away just for a split second, like he can't yeah, even believe yeah. how horrific he's yeah, being. No, I just that just too. for a split yeah, yeah, second, yeah. he looks and, away. But then he does look back yeah. and just sort of watches. But yeah, at that first little bit, which I think is actually supposed to be like the killing blow, like. Uh, blood oh, splattering and he's yeah. like yeah but it was even like before that was on the edge of my seat when he said um when she walks such poor woman has literally just given birth mm -hmm. and the meister was saying she needs rest and he was like nope yeah even um, the baby yeah. was still like weird yeah. purpley yeah, fucking, yeah, like, yeah 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 and he says kind of hold him and it was and she, just that bit of like handing the baby over to him i was <laughs> on, the, on the on the edge of my seat um but that was horrible. Um, we know from the trailer for the next episode, I don't know who it is, but somebody's there with Ramsay saying, "There's a, we've brought you a gift or there's a gift, something about a gift mm -hmm. anyway. So that that looks like something's going to be going down. We'll save that well for next. a small yeah. council yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Anything that you want to say about else that you want to say about Winterfell before we move on to like Sansa and Brienne who are right, like rounded about in the north um Winterfell Ruth dying was a bit of a letdown 
Yeah. Yes. Just, just that. Yeah. I, well, way of I his death, that, like not even a struggle, not even anything. So honestly, I would say there's a lot you could do with that if if you wanted to. It was a bit of an anticlimax, and, and I said And again, to you, you, if you want to play to the title home, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at James Johnson here, then go with it. The title of the thing is called Home. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I see. Yeah. Um, it was a it was a strange death that left me wanting something. Well, I felt like it was a bit of a tumbleweed moment because he, he stabbed him and he could. There was a real kind of like, oh, I've been stabbed. Yeah, but which was the the cliche. He, as he kind of he you know. fell fell down, and I'm not saying it was bad acting or anything like that, but what what I am saying is he didn't have his throat slit. Therefore, why didn't he say something? Even yeah, just like, yeah. you bastard, yeah. you know, as he was yeah. falling down or whatever. And it's like it, a gut blow. And it's yeah. Like but he just kind of went, and mm. kind of, and it was like, I don't, yeah, that was a weird death. Again, so <laughs> I say the, the title of the show is called Home. Mm. And I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Well, we'll see but what James says. I, yeah. 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 I think there's, there's some arguments kicking around there. That, yeah possible um so then we get a scene with sansa and brienne and pod and theon um don't have much here either i thought yeah. it was great it was probably one of my favorite scenes just uh sansa remembering aria mm. was it kind of made the show for me like her face kind of lit up a bit like oh she was fine she was good she dressed yeah. like a boy yeah she would yeah yeah it was, yeah it was, it was, pretty, it was, it was, it was cool. a nice yeah, kind yeah. of sisterly yeah, sort yeah. of um and again Sansa kind of maturing and and um you know because they were they were very uh there was a lot of sibling rivalry with Sansa and Arya when they were younger and there was yeah. a lot of squabbling so it was nice yeah. to say a kind of reminiscing familial love a, yeah, and yeah, just like yeah. oh i miss fucking hating her so fucking yeah. much yeah 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 um i thought again it was quite sweet when she gave theon another hug and he kind of <gasps> caught his breath and said theon's um, fucking acting in that brilliant was fucking yeah. great yeah it just really was good yeah sketchy like and and and, he looked and tiny um, too like he looked really tiny like me what's the name of the actress who plays sansa can't think of it right now. Nope. Lost it. I know it, but I've lost yeah, it. Yeah, I just can't, I can't think of it. It'll come to me in like any minute now. Uh, Sophie. Sophie Turner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was good as well. And, and you know, when yeah, she was oh saying, yeah, I'll, yeah. I will, I'll tell John the truth. And, I'll be, and, and Theon, bless him, was saying, I don't, I don't want to be... I don't want to be forgiven. So this is like a massive, like towards the end of Theon's redemption arc, obviously. Um, and we'll, we, I know that we will be getting into that in much more detail in the small council. Well, so we have other things. We'll, we'll get to the Ironborn here, but I think Theon's got a fucking nice little fucking story to play in this, mm. Mm. this, at least yeah. the TV show. So the very last area for us to talk oh, about we are on Pike now. Okay. is the Ironborn. All right. So you see Asher talking to her father, Balon, who, we, again, we've not seen for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, and for any uh, UK... Has been since season two? It's has, he hasn't the, shown up. At or least, did, no, no, he, he must three. have sent them out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you, Sorry. UK viewers will remember the actor who plays Balon from The Crystal Maze. And I can't see anything else now when I see, when I see Balon. Um, but again, he's a great actor. And he, so Ash is talking about wanting peace. And she doesn't seem to understand, you know, there is, he's talking about, I'm the last king left. And she's like, well, where's your kingdom? Where, where is it? Well, mm -hmm. what's, what's happening? Mm -hmm. So they have an argument. He walks out onto the rope bridge. And then we get this scene with Euron coming back and I was looking for when he was on the bridge I was trying to see if I could see did he have an eye patch and it was kind of the way they shot it it was sort of like in the shadows but I think briefly for a second it looks like it looks like something's not quite right I don't know whether it's it looks just like he does at eye, one but... point and then it looks like no shit yeah. he's got both eyes I mean that would be really creepy if you you know if he did the whole crow's eye thing which I would have thought given the budget would, they've got you would you know, just yeah well, I don't, yeah but anyway, that's what I was. But the, also, the yeah. other thing is, is uh, he uh, got the cut 
pretty thin, so I thought maybe that was like an eye thing. Maybe, yeah. yeah. As he was going over, I think, yeah, Balon managed to cut him, yeah. But that, so obviously, you know, in the books, that's been something that's always been alluded to. Was it a faceless man? Was it you're on hire in a faceless man? I a picture of man? myself, actually. Sorry, I apologize. Mm. The other day, and uh, my eye was black. I got it mm. in my phone right now. Yeah. Weird. Um, so, and you're on saying, I am the drowned god i am the storm and it's like whoa you know so i liked the introduction of euron talking to jd earlier and he said uh jd the dragon and he said uh it's i'm the storm the first and the last mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. kind of interesting first mm -hmm. the first storm what's the first storm what's the last storm i don't know but yeah. it was very kind of you know that or, or the the um Ironborn religion was featured quite a bit with Dan Damp Hair. Damp Hair was in this, so we get so obviously we so get Balon's Hare, funeral. We saw Damp Hair earlier on, though, right? Is it the same guy? No, it's a different actor. Yeah, I, and, like, and I think I like all, the first one better. Yeah, all you saw this time, all you saw last time was um, Theon being like baptized. Mm -hmm. Brief, so you, you there was no yeah, dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no dialogue. Um, but you see Damp Hair and Asha having a conversation where she's kind of swearing vengeance. She'll feed you whoever did this yeah, to the sharks. And, and he's so he, he kind of introduces the idea of the King's Moot, which I'm really quite excited about the King's Moot. Yeah, yeah, so, sure. you know, she might be the first woman, she might not. Um, so that's kind of put this idea into Asha's head. She, she needs to start planning now how she's going to kind of rally her troops and what kind of campaign yeah. she's going to have. And obviously Euron's going to be part of this as well. Um, but one of the things that we both kind of went, what? At was when Asha, or Yara, I should say, keep saying Asha because we've actually got yeah. a cat upstairs, Asha. So Yara is always like a weird, anyway, Yara. Um when she says i swear by the salt throne and it's like what the fuck is the salt throne obviously she's talking about the sea stone chair yeah why don't they just call it the sea stone chair i don't it's, understand yeah I, oh that's too confusing for people yeah. i mean i don't get it <laughs> the salt throne to me i picture a fucking throne made of salt it's ridiculous it's weird i yeah. picture a big yeah. fucking white yeah. you know solid salt but still yeah. like salt Throne is just. Well, I am excited for the Ironborn scenes and the King's Moot for the rest of the season. Yes, so I, I got a little bit to say on a few things here. Mm -hmm. uh, first, what was the conversation with. Uh, was Yara mm -hmm. and uh, Balon? when they're talking about the last the i guess fucking the the rebellion the great yeah. joy rebellion and they lost the sons yes and what's what's she said i lost two brothers and he and said so I, lost, I lost three yeah. sons meaning theon yeah um and now mm. i looked at it as theon mm. without his dick <laughs> is kind of no longer a son to him he had Theon back at one point, and he gave him up again. Yeah, he could have just denounced him as like, you're, mm -hmm. you're no longer my son. Or he could have just meant, he was stolen from me, so I lost him. He could have, but Theon came back. Yeah, yeah. Theon's yeah. been back and yeah, talked to him. Yeah, he just didn't recognise So Theon this would be all. my argument of, at least in this show, can, and what you were just saying with Ken... The don't fucking hate me for what I'm saying here. I'm just going off of what the show has given me and opinions of the characters within the show. Mm -hmm. Could Theon be the first woman? And I don't mean that in any bad way as much as it sounds like I, I do. But the first non-man dude to sit this the unit, salt, you mean. Salt, salt throne. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, they're not going to go that. It's ambiguous in the books whether or not Ramsay did that to him. It's kind of, it's, it's not ever really spelled out, but... I know it's ambiguous in the books, but it's, it's even less so ambiguous here. Mm. You mm. had it with the sausage. You <laughs> had it with the dick in the box getting delivered to Balon. It's pretty yeah. fucking accurate. 
Um, so and and with what Balon had just said previously, can Theon actually become by the end of this the king of the Ironborn? Oh yeah, I think there's a possibility of that. Yeah, that's that's if he doesn't die in his because he's like desperate to be forgiven and rushing into. You know, he's going to sacrifice himself at the drop of a hat if it means he can save a Stark. Because it's all part of his redemption arc. Uh, I'm but, not actually you know, certain about that. I don't know. That's all we've got. Unless there's anything else that you want to add. Oh, I had uh, notes. I'll honestly tell you something. Mm -hmm. Which I found funny. Because I was looking back through my notes of the first night. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, sorry. But it is funny. In my notes, I have something in regards to Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman. <laughs> you don't know. Do you know Aren't who they Dennis Rodman basketball is? Yeah, players. They're both basketball yeah, players. One of them was in um, Celebrity Big Brother here years ago. It would have been ago. Dennis Rodman, trust me. Yes, it was Dennis Rodman, yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't yeah. have been Michael Jordan. <laughs> um, which was kind of the point is uh, I, I, I don't, and I'm trying to fucking find them here. Uh, there it is. Dennis Rodman, Michael Jordan. One has everything you could dream of. The other is a nut job who fucking went to meet. Do you know Dennis Rodman went to meet the fucking dictator of North Korea? Like he fucking sat, hangs around with him now? No. I don't know what my fucking. Why is this in my notes? I don't fucking have a clue. <laughs> I don't know. I know. But that's <laughs> funny. So it's. I don't know. But it's important. I'm sure you'll figure it out. No, it I've been comments. trying for the last day and a half. <laughs> I, I don't know, because I don't really know who these people are, but yeah. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Make a but note it's of it something to do with him being, it's how you use your power. You can be the popular person, or you can be the person next to the person in charge. Something... Something like that, to but me? I don't know who I was relating it to. Possibly, I I've been trying to think of, but I don't know who the the Dennis Rod or who the Michael Jordan character is supposed to be. Like, who's the the famous one or the 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 most influential but doesn't do anything sort of one? I don't get it. I don't know what I was trying to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's. Are we done? Well, that's what my notes were. I'm sorry. I apologize, but I thought that was actually funny that that was actually in my fucking notes. I, I really did. I was like, what the fuck was I thinking about it at this point in time? Okay, how long we go? 117? We're hardly even later than usual. Yeah, we are. We don't really, we do, we're not going over an hour so much these days, which is which is good. We've never been under an hour in Wait, our lives. It's late, it's late and we've got some more counsel All right. tomorrow, so we shall see you next week. Episode 3, which is Oathkeeper. Yeah. And we will see everybody on the small council probably later on today. A few hours, yeah. Yeah, this will take a few hours to upload. Um, and links and stuff will be in descriptions below of people we mentioned and stuff. If they're not there right away, mm -hmm. forgive me, because I set this off and I'll probably fall asleep. And when I wake up tomorrow, it'll be on for a while, but then I'll get to it. Because... It's weird, and that's all I'm saying about that. So, bye. Bye.